You realize over the years I've attended 60 consecutive Chicago Bear home openers? Actually 60 plus, but really who's counting? All right, game time, long ball time, Daily Copic time. How are you doing everybody? I'm Chet Copic. Daily Copic brought your way by the great people over at Carmichael's, 1052 1052 West Monroe Street. I want you to stop by Carmichael's, enjoy their steaks, enjoy their seafood, enjoy the sides. Carmichael's, it's time to treat yourself. All right, going back in time, people have asked me before, what was the worst Chicago Bear football game I ever saw? Ironically, it wasn't a regular season or a playoff game. It was an exhibition game. We turn the hands of the clock all the way back to August of 1971. Milwaukee County Stadium, the Bears against their arch rivals, the Green Bay Packers. The Bears won the ball game in 95 degree heat by a final score of two to nothing. If I'm not mistaken, both clubs combined had less than 300 yards total offense. It's never been confirmed, but to the best of my knowledge, neither offensive team on the pack or the Bears actually got off the bus. Now, a little happier note, my two favorite all-time Chicago Bears regular season openers. Number one, go back to 1987. Bill Parcells, the New York Giants, defending Super Bowl champions against Mike Ditka and the Bears. The Bears have won the title two years earlier. It was a huge Monday night football game. The Bears won the ball game by a final of 34 to 19. The hype for that ball game, the buildup was absolutely off the charts. The ball game also featured the single most athletic play I've ever seen at Soldier Field. Silky D, Dennis McKinnon, number 85, a guy who joined the Bears as a free agent out of Florida State, returning a punt, 85 yards for a touchdown. Number two, we go way, way back in time. Back to the days of uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. September 1963, the Bears, en route to their last championship under the legendary Papa Bear George Hallis, knocked off the Green Bay Packers at Lambeau Field up in Titletown on opening day by a final of 10 to 3. The Bears intercepted five passes in that ball game. George Hallis always maintained it was the Bears' greatest team victory. Now, just out of curiosity, who is the worst assistant coach the Chicago Bears have ever had? John Shoup, of course, the man who ran the Chicago Bear offense during the uh, legendary Dick Geron era. For all practical purposes, Shoup's nickname should have been John Three and Out Shoup. His idea of a great play was uh, a screen pass, which very simply never unfolded. The worst postseason loss in Chicago Bear history, we go back to Frostbite Falls. I was at this ball game. January of 1989, Soldier Field, the Bears against the San Francisco 49ers. Mike Ditka had said all week long the cold weather was going to be a plus for the Bears, that all roads to the Super Bowl went through Chicago. And the fact is, they did. However, Joe Montana and the San Francisco 49ers showed up. Montana, absolutely brilliant in weather that was absolutely violently cold. The windshield factor felt like it was 25 below, completed three touchdown passes to uh, lead the Niners over the Bears by a final of 28 to three. Now, while Mike Ditka did continue as head coach of the Chicago Bears through 1992, for all practical purposes, that was the end of the golden era for Iron Mike as head coach of the Chicago Bears. Worst first round draft pick in Chicago Bear history. My gosh, we could talk about Stan Thomas, we could talk about Mike Hull, we could talk about uh, John Theory, we could talk about Curtis Enos, but I'm gonna cast my vote for the red-haired quarterback from UCLA, Cade McNown, for uh, a couple of reasons. Number one, he had the competitive instincts of a bug. Number two, he really never felt like playing. All he felt like doing was picking up uh, uh, paper on the 15th and 30th. Cade McNown is best remembered for one thing, he established an all-time record for illegal use of handicapped parking permits by a football player at UCLA. We aren't done yet. Here are the rules for Copic Soldier Field tailgating. They are very, very simple. Number one, nobody but nobody is allowed to sing Crazy Train by Ozzy Osbourne. Every time I hear that song at Soldier Field, I either want to vomit or punch out the guy with the boom box. Number two, you're not allowed to curse you're not allowed to use four-letter words just because you took Bowling Green on Saturday, plus 28 against Oklahoma State, got your brains knocked out, and lost Junior's college money. Meanwhile, as for the Bears, 
Where will they be in uh, December going into January? There'll be a football team sitting with a record of 10 and 6. There'll be a ball club that will go to the playoffs as a wild card out of the National Football Conference. This has been the Daily Copic. Hum a chorus of Bear Down. Tanisha, I want Bear Down Chicago Bears to close this show. And we tribute. And we tribute, you dumb f <laughs> Meanwhile, after a Bear game, where do you want to stop? Carmichael's, the place for steaks, 1052 West Monroe Street. Hey, it's just a driver and a half wedge from the United Center. Carmichael's, the food is going to absolutely melt in your mouth. The place for steaks in Chicago. I'm Copic. I'm out of here. Catch you next time around on the Daily Copic. So long, everybody.